Hi. We've looked at how to find the midpoint of a line segment if you know the coordinates of the two endpoints. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find one of the endpoints if you know the other endpoint and the midpoint. So it's basically working backwards. Okay, so here's the question. What we know is that the midpoint of a certain line segment AB is this point M at negative 1, 2. We know that A is the point negative 8, 5, and we're asked to find the coordinates of B. So we know one of the endpoints, and we know the midpoint. So we know that the other point should be somewhere around here where my pinky is. Okay? Um, but we're going to use what we know about a midpoint to find this, to find the other endpoint. So I'm going to do this two ways. The first way I'm just going to do the kind of by looking at the picture and counting things out. And then the second way I'm going to do it with the midpoint formula. And we'll get the same answer both ways. Okay. So either way we do it, we're going to look at the x values and the y values separately. Um, let's start just by counting it out. I'll look at the x values first. So what I think is, how did I get in my x values from the point A up to the middle? And then I'm going to do that again, because the middle's in the middle, so it should be symmetrical. I do it again, and I should get to my b value. Okay? So here, what did we do to get from negative 8 to negative 1? And so in that direction, we added 7. Okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 again. So negative 1 plus 7, that's going to put me at an x value of 6. So it'll be somewhere on this line here. When I get the y value, we'll know exactly where. So for the y values, what did we do to get from 5 to 2? We went down 3. We subtracted 3. So I'm going to do that again. Subtract another 3. So from 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So this is going to put our endpoint here. We had the x value of 6, and the y value is negative 1. So the point B is 6, negative 1. Okay, another way we can do it is we can use the midpoint formula, and we'll use the x and y values separately. So let's do the x value first. The x value of the midpoint. Because I'm doing it separately, it's really important to label with words so we know what's going on. So the x value of my midpoint is negative 1. But we know that negative 1 from the midpoint formula, it's the, just the average of the other two x values. So maybe let's... Uh, I'm going to cover this up with my pen lid now, because we're doing the question a different way. So we want to sort of, we'll pretend we don't know the answer here. We should get the same answer as we got this time, but we don't want to use that to find the answer. Okay, so we know that the x value of the midpoint is negative 1, but we also know that that's x1 plus x2 divided by 2, the average of the x's. Let's write that down. x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Okay, now I'll substitute what I know, which is x1. So it's negative 8 plus x2 divided by 2. And now I've got just a nice little linear equation there. There's only one variable, so I can solve this pretty easily. Um, I'd like to isolate x2, so to get rid of that dividing by 2, I'll multiply both sides by 2. And that simplifies. So on the left I have negative 2. On the right I have negative 8 plus x2. And I'd like to get rid of the negative 8, so I'll add 8. Oops. So we have 8, subtract 2 over here. So this simplifies. And now we have x2 equals 8, subtract 2, which is 6. That's perfect. That's what we had before, too. Okay, now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the y values. So my y values, y value of the midpoint, is 
The y value of the midpoint is 2. But we know that the y value of the midpoint is y1 plus y2 over 2, just the average. So now I'm going to substitute my y1. That's 5 plus y2 over 2. And now I want to isolate y2, so I'll multiply both sides by 2. And here we have 5 plus y2 equals 4. And I'll subtract 5 to get rid of that. Subtract it from both sides. And I have y2 equals negative 1. And that conveniently is also what we had before. Now maybe here we just forgot to write a concluding sentence. Um, let's put it, so the mid, so the other end point is six negative one. Okay, so if you choose to solve a problem like this, sort of using counting and adding and doubling and stuff, just make sure you're really writing down what you're doing. You could write it like this, or you could sort of go over and down and over and down again if you thought that sort of made more sense as a way to draw it. But you really just have to write down what you're doing. Uh, if you choose to write it this way, maybe I'll underline these, make sure you tell us in words what you're doing. Um, overall, for this kind of question, the errors I see the most often actually are silly ones. What people do is they'll just find the midpoint between A and M. So that's just a question of reading the question properly and understanding that we know A and we know the midpoint, but we'd like to find B. So the B isn't halfway between. B is the other end point. So I think as long as you know that, then you just you can use reasoning or your midpoint formula to find it out. Uh, all right. Good luck with it.